DBC Vikings Coach's Corner with your host, Gio Mihadis. Hello, Viking fans and everybody. I am Gio Mihadis, and this is the Coach's Corner. Today, we are interviewing Coach Dennis LePet. So, Coach, tell us a little background about yourself, and then uh, I'll ask you a few questions about this, this season and the team. Well, I've been coaching for about 40 years, spent 33 doing high school. I went to DVC, played baseball at DVC, uh, went to Northern Illinois University after DVC. And when I got my master's there, I came back and coached at DVC for one year doing football and baseball. And then I went into teaching and then I came back to DVC seven years ago as the baseball coach. And then I did softball for six years and then now I'm back to baseball. So we played a pretty tough schedule this year. Um, was that a plan to get the players ready for next year as there's probably going to be playoff games? Well, I just believe when I'm recruiting kids, I'm telling them that we're playing in the Big Eight, which is the best league in Northern California. And at the same time, our non-league games are always going to be against the best teams in the other conferences around here. And I feel that's important for Kids that are moving on, when coaches want to recruit them, they know they're playing against good competition. So if you're batting 400, you're a pretty good player. So uh, how has the, the team chemistry and the culture has been so far since uh, there's COVID going on and there's no playoff games? Well, I think this team has really come together as a, a close group. I think the COVID stuff made it difficult to get to know each other in the beginning because we were in pods and separated so much. But once the game started and we started doing testing on campus, I think the players have kind of formed a nice bond together. And I, the, what I really appreciate is the guys that aren't in the game are really cheering on the other guys that are playing more than they are, which is not easy at times. True. So I heard you guys were inner squatting two times a week. Was that the best way to get the team ready to compete in these games this year? Well, I felt that was, you know, you have to see live pitching if you're going to be a good hitter. It's hard to start playing games when you haven't seen live pitching. And at the same time, it's really easy for a pitcher to throw a bullpen without somebody up there hitting. So by, you know, doing the inner squad games twice a week, it was the same as us playing games. You know, because we usually we start in February playing games. So this gave us a chance to get those games in a little bit and gave the coaches a chance to see who we felt were going to be legitimate pitchers and who our best hitters would be. In the opening series against San Mateo, how did you feel when J.D. Pinion walked off the ninth inning? Well, the year before San Mateo came over to DVC and I think we lost like 12 to one. And the coach was letting guys bat five and six times in the game. He never, he brought over 35 guys and then he played nine guys, which I felt was trying to run up the score. So when we beat them this year and I watched Pinion's base hit to walk off against them, it was like, you know what, this is great. They whipped us last year and then we come back and we beat them the first game this year. And they're throwing their best pitchers and we're throwing our best pitchers. And we were missing Ula that day who has, has been our top pitcher. True. So Ula's actually now 4-0 right now. And uh, what has been, like, the leading, the reason why he's been doing well, well this year? Well, I felt that, you know, last year Ula, he struck out 14 guys for every nine innings that he pitched. And I think he pitched well enough to win games last year. But our team wasn't as good a hitting team as it is this year. And we weren't as good on defense. So many of the games that he pitched, you know, he could have won, but we didn't score enough runs or we'd make errors. And it cost Ula some wins that he would have had. Now, this year, Ula has done the same thing. He's dominated when he's pitched, but we've been able to score him some runs and make life a little bit easier for him. Definitely, definitely. You're talking about good hitting, and we have uh, A.J. Leveas. He's hitting 486 right now. And uh, just give us a little background about this guy. Well, I got him to come over from Deer Valley, where I had coached for 17 years. So I kind of had some ties to some people there. And I felt in high school he was a good hitter. I mm -hmm. just wasn't sure what would be his best position when he came here. And last year, he played first base for us because we didn't have a first baseman. And I think that was hard for him to be a good hitter and play first because he was always so stressed about playing first base. Or this year now he's kind of settled into playing 
left field and hitting wise he just drives the ball he's so confident at home plate and last year he used to swing too soon and the ball would be in the dirt and he'd be breaking down his swing trying to hold it back or this year he kind of waits a little longer on the ball and and he drives the ball to the fence as we talk about ula and aj being their star player so far is there any other players you want to bring up that have been doing well or any team captains or anyone that's been stepping up overall most improved well Coming into the season, I knew you would be a really good hitter for us, and you have been a leader and the leading RBI guy for us, and you've done a great job there. The surprise of the team so far was Sergio Vasquez because he was going in the last weekend's games. He was 400 with a 500 on base average, which last year he struck out you know two out of three times he ever batted. And then um, Merchant playing shortstop for us. You know, Ryan Richards was the shortstop last year. And then Merchant came in this year. And he offensively, he's done really, really well for us. He's been a leader as a leadoff hitter. And that was a huge surprise. Yeah, definitely. I think, in my opinion, that um, Merchant's actually a really good leadoff hitter. He's like a good spark plug to start the game. So we have Aloni, Solano, and Santa Rosa to end the season. What, what will we have to work on the most during these last few series? Well, I really think uh, pitching-wise has been the key to all the series. As we win game one when Ula pitches, and then we've kind of struggled in game two. And then, you know, lately, you know, Kinnick started doing a good job of helping us in game three. And then last weekend, I wanted to give Tamalier a chance to – to show what he can do. He's been the closer, always coming in and in, in pressure situations. And it allowed him to, to relax a little bit and know that he's going to pitch more than one inning. And he gave us a great effort in winning two to one. And anytime you have a chance to beat a Sierra, you know, sweep a Sierra team, that was that was huge for us. And I think that will really help us with the Loney. Loney's coming in, their record's 12 and two. They have good players, good pitching, so we're going to need good pitching to be able to stay in the games and have a chance to win. Yeah, we actually had two big series wins against Marin and Sierra. What were some key aspects of those wins? Well, I think it was the key was pitching and that we were able to score some runs. Uh, in both of the series, we, we scored 21 runs against Sierra. We scored 11 runs in a game against uh, Marin. You know, when you're getting a lot of hitting, it's contagious and the kids start believing in themselves. And I think that's the key to is winning, but also winning where you're building confidence while you're winning. And that will really help us when we finish up with Ohlone and Solano and Santa Rosa. What are your goals for the end of the year for the team? Well, I, I talked with the athletic director a little bit about this season because it is a COVID season. Everybody's getting the year back. Uh, winning is important because in order to recruit kids, you've got to be winning games. So we want to try to win as many games as we can to finish the season. But at the same time, I have two different goals. One is to move on the guys that have been there for two and three years to some other schools. So they need their stats. They need at bats so that they can, you know, show what they can do. And then I also got, you know, the returning freshmen that have been playing well for us, you know, like Merchant and Molinaro have done a good job in the infield. Tony at second base has done a good job. So yeah. I'm trying to get in, them in as much as possible. So, you know, it's, it's just a... It's get them a, some experience. Yep. It's a crazy year with this COVID, you know. And yeah. a lot of, some of those guys would have redshirted because, you know, they weren't going to play that much. But now they can they can play as much as I can get them in. Definitely. I like that a lot. So they're ready for next year. Yeah. So uh, what are some plans for summer ball and getting ready for the next year's team? Well, I know recruiting has been hard during COVID. And tell us a little bit about that, too. Well, I was able to get 22 guys committed uh, before Christmas break, which was huge. I've got seven or eight coming from Reno and some different guys from different areas around here. So that was nice. Now, recently, we've been able to bring kids on campus so they could visit the school and stuff like that. So, so that's been helpful. So right now, we have about 28 kids that have committed to coming in. Our summer program, we're going to start for the first time. We're going to have a, a collegiate team, 
which will be the returning players and some of the guys that are on our team now that want to play. And then some of the recruits that I'm, I'm bringing in also want to play with our guys. And it'll give them a chance to get to know and bond a little bit in the summer. So everybody, this is Gio Harris, and this is the Coach's Corner. And thank you, Dennis Lequette. All right, Gio, thank you.